there's a lot of reasons that you could point to for the disappearance of certain cards, whether it be the metagame, the colors for it not just being good at the time, certain creatures being better, but I think some things can be a bit more definitive. And it came across one such case with Croxa, and with such a card that's been prevalent in modern as a mid-range piece, as a comeback engine, as just that extra option that you have, an extension of your graveyard that can use your kind of useless spells and recast, punish your opponent a little bit. I was really curious as to where this card went. The Titan cycle is one that hasn't been completed, far from it. It, it consists of some of the most powerful cards ever printed in Magic's history. I mean, take a look at Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, a card that's banned in modern, one of my favorite cards of all time, and I mean, a legacy and maybe vintage powerhouse, I don't know that format that well, but definitely gets played in legacy. Again, such powerful options out of the graveyard, but what happened to it in modern? That's what I want to kind of investigate through and maybe hopefully as we kind of walk through this inform you as to some of the larger forces going like kind of pushing it in that direction in modern or maybe I just might solidify something that we've all realized for a very long time. Now for many of you longtime viewers out there, have y'all missed when I put memes up at the beginning of the video? I used to put up like random like edgy memes and stuff like that. Let me know if you wanted to come back. Comment section down below if you want the memes back at the beginning of the video. I'm here for him. But anyway, you get a little you get a little Katniss and 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 I don't know whatever thing meme for Croxa Titan of Death's Hunger. You know, red and uh, red and black for a Rakdos legendary that comes back and it has that Titan templating of escape for four XL five other cards from your graveyard. And you do have to enable that like pretty well having six cards in graveyard and honestly having Croxa plus five other cards that you do want to exile is another thing as well. I mean, Merktide region is really prevalent. You have a lot of other graveyard pieces that, you know, that do care about the amount of cards in your graveyard. Like there's that Phoenix that you can bestow back and everything. There's a lot of cards that care about the cards in the graveyard. But when it enters, if you were to cast it, it's really powerful at two, to be fair. Uro's at three, and even Flage that we're going to talk about later down the line is at three. Crocs at two is really powerful. When it enters or attacks, each opponent discards a card. Then if each opponent didn't discard a non-land card this way, uh, they lose three life. So if you just had no cards to discard, or you just discarded a land, then you lose three life. So you lose a resource, potentially lose some life. And I want to talk about how, you know, this card is actually really powerful in discard heavy mid range decks, um, forcing you out of resources and forcing you in a bad spot. A card like this is really powerful. So why isn't it played anymore? I mean, right now, if you look at the modern metagame and to where it's being played, it's not even played as the top. 50 creatures in the format. And that's because, I mean, even before it was played as like a one max a two up. It was that random card that you got that you wanted an option to kind of play out of the yard. A lot of things you were doing in the mid range decks were more powerful anyway. You had Orcage Bowmasters and all that stuff. Like you were doing powerful things anyway. Croxa was this like additional piece that you could get out into. You didn't want multiples because then, you know, the whole legend rule thing, like there's so many problems with it um, that you couldn't have multiple out. So it wasn't really that relevant. Um, I mean, heck, if you take a look at it, a hydroelectric specimen is more played than this. And this is because it's played in Belcher. It's because it's a land, all that stuff. Like there's all this stuff going on. So many different reasons. And it's really primarily because it is that one and two of. But why? Why wouldn't you want to play more copies of something like this? Well, I mean, if you take a look at the Rakdos mid range decks that will play it right now, um, you're always playing, uh, already playing cards like Nether Goyf and Dragon's Rage Chandler, which in contention again like you have something like the uh phoenix that i was talking about so this is uh this is the hollow one deck actually i shouldn't call this rakdos midrange at all this is the hollow one deck the next one is gonna be rakdos midrange um you have cards that you really care about in your yard you don't want to excel another growth you want to make sure you have delirium for the extra turns and for the three three flyer and you want to be able to bring back uh you know the kind of uh card here but you know you're still playing the one of it's still down here, peaked away, hidden away. It's still there in case you need to grind out or take your opponents off of cards and stuff like that. And, that, and that's because of a specific other land that we're going to talk about in the Arena of Glory. But when it comes to like, you know, the mid-range decks here, you have some Galvanic Discharges, you have Inquisition of Kozilek, you have some Molten Collapses as well. And you're even playing Psychic Frog, which allows you to, you know, kind of quickly put cards in the yard. So if you're able to hyper enable a card like this, then it could be really powerful as well. Again, you don't have as many cards in the yard that you care about. You don't have a Dragon's Race Chandler in here. You're playing Ragavan and the Amped Raptor. So in this way, this type of list is a lot better. But again, still only a one of. You don't really want many copies of it because there are just better cards. You want more copies of Ragavan, Amped Raptor, Orcish, Psychic Frog. It's one of the most busted threats right now. Heck, legacy players are screaming about that card, to be fair. So it probably 
I mean, if, if Psychic Frog doesn't get banned in December in Legacy, ooh, that format's about to be something. I mean, it's kind of why I want to play Painter in Legacy right now. I really want to get into Legacy because Red is really good. You can mainboard Pyroblast and Hydroblast and just do really well, um, all things considered. So great format for me to get into considering uh, the mill win conditions. But Uro is a card that was banned, templated. It was definitely the peak of it. Like this card, ramping you being a 6-6. Six, six. Yes, it didn't have like, you know, Crocs is a 6-6 six, six as well, but this thing like gaining you life, drawing cards and ramping, definitely the most busted of this. I mean, Croxa has a conditional lose three life. If you discard a non-land card, you're not gonna lose the three life. You still discard a card, but this card draws you life, puts you ahead on life, puts you ahead on cards and puts you ahead on lands. There's a reason this card is the best Titan out there, right? Uh, and rightfully so. But when it comes to something like, you know, template and growth spiral, we can see that Croxa in many ways templates something like Blightning. And with something like Blightning, you know, the Blightning's at three, it's sorcery speed, deal three damage, play, target player discards two cards. There was a time in modern before Modern Horizons and heck, even a lot of standard sets and other sets to come out where Blightning was playable. Jun decks were playing Blightning. You could, I've, Pretty, I'm 99% sure you could find footage of Reed Duke playing Blightning and Jund. Um, and so templating around this, like kind of that discard, losing life, this wasn't as conditional. But when it comes to printing different Titans, I think where we start to see it getting outclassed is in something like when we start templating Lightning Helix. And in the aforementioned Flage Titan of Fire's Fury. When it enters the battlefield, it's still a 6-6, six, six, escape, five cards, all that regular templating. Great. It's three, though, not two. Croxus still has that advantage on it. Flage enters the battlefield, sacrifice, and when it enters the battlefield, deal three damage to any target and gain three life. So it, it gives you like a almost a six life delta if you hit your opponent with it. Otherwise, you can use that three damage and target anything, which is the big thing that Croxa loses. It loses optionality and gives your opponent too much control. Whereas Flage does not do that. Flage gives you all the control. If you hit your opponent for three and you gain three, that's a six life delta. And if you were to gain three and then destroy like a creature on the field, like a Ragavan, an Ampharaptor, Orcish Bullmasters, whatever, then you gain a lot of value out of that anyway. And Flage is the type of card that gets played in, in terms of like so many copies. Like if we were to kind of look at Boris Energy list, people are playing three to four Flages in the list because you really want to see this card. You really want to see Lightning Helix at three, potentially even Lightning Helix at four and more because of the top end of it, right? This card, I mean, in a lot of times in this deck list, you really only get to cast Flage like one, maybe two times if you're grinding. You're really only casting this once because you don't have many ways to fill your yard anyway. And one is all you need and you need to be able to see it. That's the key. For the mid-range decks that are able to fill their yard, you are able to, most of the time, able to get your delirium feud your yard and draw more cards through the dragon's rage channeler i mean heck if you're playing in the hollow one decks you're able to kind of draw through your deck fill your graveyard you're going to be able to find it but something like flage you aren't really necessarily able to get there but the life gain is really important especially when it comes to the one ring which we're going to get back to in a second when it comes to something like flage the part i want to mention is at that top end i was talking about with arena of glory that's what kind of makes it busted. I kind of mentioned Arena of Glory in one of the deck lists before, but having the ability to have this enter on four with Arena of Glory and enter, deal three damage, gain three, and then again on attack, deal three damage, gain three. If you dealt all of that damage to your opponent, you have now created a 12 life delta. You've dealt six damage to your opponent and gained six, and then you're also just swinging in for six damage on this creature. And if it dies, you're just gonna be able to kind of bring it back again. Exile doesn't really exist in modern efficiently right now. Path to Exile is not a playable card. There are more destroy effects than you think. Modern's metagame right now is all about counter magic. It's about destroying. Again, Path to Exile isn't really there. Static Prism is a temporary measure. Exile isn't that prevalent. It's more destroying, it's more preemptive, it's more optionality. It's not that hard removal. So Arena of Glory has that value at the late game because you're able to create those deltas. The problem is you can use Arena Glory with Croxa. So again, why isn't it playable? As I mentioned, Croxa doesn't give you enough options and gives too much of it to your opponent. So when it attacks, your opponent discards a card, great, but you don't get to choose the card. So you lose that option already. It's not a thought seize. But if your opponent doesn't discard an online card, like a non-land card, they lose three life. But if they discard, an online card, they don't lose three life. 
And that's the problem. Your opponent gets to choose. Your opponent can choose not to. And that way, even when you attack with the Croxa, your opponent can again choose not to discard an online card and then not lose a three life and they only take three. But then you'd say, Shaft, they can't always have non-land cards. That's a lie. Because the One Ring is in modern. Therein lies the fundamental problem. The One Ring has power crept Crocs out of the form. And that is the kind of thing that I was talking about in the beginning. It may just be a realization that we all knew from the beginning. The One Ring has power crept many things out of the form. And I'm kind of, I'm hoping that like all these videos that I'm making that are like anti-One Ring are showing y'all that like, look, it may be a good card. There's uses for it and and and, and the power that it provides the format, great. In fact, is playing the One Ring. But it's power creeping a lot of the cards that we think are good out of the format. And if it goes, it might open up more space for cards like this to come back. Because with the One Ring, you're going to be able to draw your way out and draw more non-land cards to discard to the Croxa. The One Ring is going to come down and stop that Croxa from even dealing any damage to you on the attack. And then you're going to be able to draw into more One Rings, drawing you more cards, stopping more Croxa attacks. And therefore, that card doesn't matter. The great thing about Flage, though, you could say the same thing about Flage because Flage, you could play uh, against Flage, you could play repeated One Rings. But the great thing is if you're the owner of Flage, you're going to be able to undo the damage that the One Ring is doing to you, which is why you see three to four copies of Flage in all of these One Ring decks at the top, because it is a great option of life gain that you're able to then feed your yard. I mean, heck, if you draw a bunch of cards, your hand limit is still seven. You can discard some cards to your graveyard to then cast Flage the turn after. And that is an option that you have to then reanimate, have this recurring threat. You have the one ring going, you have Flage going. You have to force your uh, uh, you know, your opponent to choose. You're playing all of these cards. You put your opponent in a terrible situation. But when you play Flage or when you cast Crocs, I should say, you give your opponent too many options. And therein lies the problem. You wait all this time, you do nothing, and your opponent is just one ring you out of the game. And that is ultimately why Crocs is not playable in modern anymore. It's not that it doesn't have a home. It's just bad. With the one ring out there, uh, the, the Croxa has no way to value your opponent out of the game. You're never going to be at low amount of cards on average in modern. You're either too fast for Croxa to be relevant or you're too grindy with the one ring for Croxa to be relevant. So therein lies the problem with modern. I'm going to be making a bunch of these. I, I, I can't I can't wait. A lot of these videos, they're going to be like random videos showcasing different cards that have like good and bad issues with them. Some card could be really skyrocketing thanks to the One Ring. Some card could be bad because of the One Ring. I, look, I'm not going to make my whole channel about this. Really just driving home the fact that a lot of times when you break it down, if you're thinking about why is the strategy good? Why is the strategy bad? Why is this card good? Why is this card bad? It's probably because of the One Ring.